You've heard it all over the news. Major company hacked, user data exposed. Hospital held ransom. Celebrity tweets something offensive, claims hackers did it. Internet superstar Linus hacked. Will it never end? Well, no. After all, for as long as there have been locks, there have been lock picks to break into them. And unfortunately, to the chagrin of major corporations and individual users alike, computers are no different. So who are these digital lock pickers and what makes them tick? You might think of 90s retro teens with glasses staring at screens flooded with code. But the reality is actually far less dramatic. At the beginning of the digital age, hackers were enthusiasts, probing to see what was possible with emerging technologies. Phone freakers are an early example from the late 1950s through the early 70s, among whom was the legendary Steve Wozniak, who would go on to co-found Apple Computer. Anyway, the idea behind freaking was to generate tones that early automated phone systems used in order to gain control for themselves. Woz and Steve Jobs even impersonated Henry Kissinger to prank call the Vatican. Sadly, that era of playful innocence ended soon after computers and networks became more commonplace. And today, we classify individual hackers by the hats that they wear, which we assign based on their intentions. The colors are white, gray, or black. No relation to Red Hat, which is an enterprise Linux distribution. White hats are mainly security researchers and penetration testers, people whose job it is to counter the other guys. Their actions are often sanctioned by the companies who pay them for their services. Some white hats have discovered massive security holes that could have affected a lot of people if they weren't found, such as Dan Kaminsky, who discovered a flaw in the DNS that could have crippled huge parts of the internet, as well as rootkits that Sony was intentionally putting onto its music CDs, which you can learn more about here. Gray hats, as the name suggests, muddy the waters since they generally don't have malicious intentions, but they act without permission from their targets and the way in which they use any data they access comes down to their personal moral code. Gray hat incidents can take many forms, from the hacker who sold an iPhone crack to the FBI to help them access the San Bernardino shooter's data, to the Russian software company that developed ebook software that bypassed DRM restrictions. Although that was legal in Russia, it wasn't in the US, leading to a run with the law when one of their employees visited the States. Black hats, meanwhile, are usually the ones making splashy headlines, as they have no problem flouting the law to profit at someone else's expense, or even to just cause damage to a website, service, business, or even an individual. When passwords or credit cards are stolen and put up for sale online, that's a black hat's handiwork. And although it's easy to label hackers that steal money from target customers as black hats, there's debate as to whether other kinds of hackers fall into this category. Think so-called hacktivists, whose actions inspire impassioned arguments or government spy agencies like the NSA. And some black hats have even had their talents recognized by major IT and cybersecurity firms who have ended up offering them jobs as long as the hacker trades in his or her black hat for a white one. But these days, it should be noted, there are much better ways to break into the world of security consulting than by committing crimes. And on the subject of the internet, TunnelBear is the VPN that lets you tunnel through 20 different countries, allowing you to browse the internet and use online services as though you are from that other country. It's crazy easy to use. They've got apps for iOS, Android, PC, and Mac, and they also have a Chrome extension. 
All you gotta do is visit the Tunnel Bear link in the video description. It'll start downloading automatically. Then once it's installed, you just click one button, choose the country that you want, and boom, a couple of things happen. Your connection gets encrypted with AES 256-bit encryption, and your public IP address gets switched, so you show up as though you're in a different country. TunnelBear also lets you bypass all of the annoying details that typically come with using a VPN for personal use. There's no port forwarding, DNS settings, none of that nonsense, and they don't log user activity. So try out TunnelBear for free at the link in the video description, tunnelbear.com slash Linus, and when you sign up, you can save 10% again by using our link. So thanks for watching, guys. Like, dislike, subscribe, or check out our other videos. Also, you can leave a comment suggesting future topics for fast as possible.